Hey, I'm Andrew from Wolf Mother. I'm Ian from Wolf Mother. And we're stoked to be here with Ornella on a Come Backstage. Hi guys, I'd like to welcome you to my interview with Wolf Mother. And um, how are you guys? Good, good, thanks. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Yeah, doing very well. How's your... Well, that first question went pretty well. That was good. <laughs> 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 How's your Gypsy Caravan tour going so far? It's going, you know, this is the best uh, year Wolf Mother's had touring Germany since we started. Why? Most people, most venues, most ticket sales. Perfect. It's great. And for you? Yeah, it's, it's, it's been one long non-stop success. <laughs> can't, can't be uh, unhappy with that. <laughs> great and you've been touring with so many bands as ACDC you played uh, with Slash, Guns N' Roses are there some musicians you uh, didn't play with which you would like to be in a room with or jam with? Um, some musicians uh, hmm. I'll just say something Herbie Hancock I don't know why that just came <laughs> out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> For you? Um, I don't know, Roy is. <laughs> <laughs> and if you could have written a very famous song that already exists, um, which one would it be and why? Uh, woman, because it's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good for you then. <laughs> um, what's a good song? Uh, a cowboy song, Thin Lizzy. Okay. I like that one. And which one would it be for you? Careless whispers, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it just came to, into your to, mind. Yeah, so. yeah, I just thought of it. Yeah. <laughs> and do you still have goals that you had in the beginning of your career, career um, which are still here so many years after that? <sighs> well, I always just want to write a better song. That's my goal. I, I, every night whilst I'm playing, I'm like, oh, yeah, this is a good song and people dig it, but I wish I could do a better one. So. Musicians always want to write that song that maybe will be listened to in still a hundred years. Do you think you you came already close to it? Well, it's been 10 years or 12 years since Woman and Apple Tree and all those songs and they're just getting bigger and bigger all the time. And that's the thing, it's kind of inversely proportional to what the industry tells you. The industry tells you that You got to be young, you got to be new, and then you're out. Whereas actually, it accumulates value, it accumulates popularity, and gets bigger. It's the opposite to what they tell you. Okay. But you know, this industry is built off insecurity. Every the last thing anyone wants you to do is believe in yourself. Because if you believe okay. in yourself, they can. They if you believe in yourself, they can't exploit you. They want all. They want you to. They want Mick Jagger to go to LA and go. I don't know if my new single's any good. And <laughs> and they're like, oh, we've got him now. Yeah. Great, Mick Jagger's insecure. <laughs> and it's like, you go, dude, it's okay, man. <laughs> Things are gonna be cool. But this this industry is designed to make you, th you know, not believe in yourself. And um, I mean, what do you want out of? What, what you meet all these musicians you guys are here what what interests you like what is there something there must be something about yeah. music that well i'm you here? i'm actually the most unmusical girl you've ever met i can't play guitar i can't even sing but i'm a lot into it and um, i love listening to the music i love finding out who the persons um behind the show persons are and um Well, I'm interested in it and why they act like they do, why they write such songs and all that stuff. That's my inspiration, kind of. Yeah, I like yeah, that. Yeah. What, what's behind it? Yeah. Where is it coming from? Because it makes you feel good. I don't know where it's, it yeah. comes from. Maybe because um, I, I really don't know where it comes from. Yeah. None of us know where it comes from. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's a secret. <laughs> none of yeah, none of us know where it comes from. Because if we knew where it came from, we'd be mass producing it every day, <laughs> you know. But it's a combination of 
uh, you know, who you are, who you are, and just putting your, like, your, your life experience, your life experience, at right time, right place, maybe there's a bit of, like, you know, you can be quite pragmatic and, and just do it and see what happens, I think, but it's also sort of like a, uh, what are they, fatalistic as well? It's meant to. It's meant to be. Yes. You know what I mean? I hope so. Yeah. I think kind of destiny. It is. Yeah. I think it's a bit of both. Yeah. You know, but I, I could, yeah. You know, um, like I saw something on um. Noel Gallagher, and he said his dad used to beat him up or something, and mm-hmm. he's saying that like he beat the songs into him. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think way uh, to interpret it. <laughs> it's a good analogy, you know, and like maybe that's what it is with me. Like I, you know, I don't know if I got my dad didn't beat me up, but I had like, <laughs> Thank God. Tra- you know, well sometimes, but traumatic experiences can give you that sensitivity, mm-hmm. you know, because you go, oh, you can feel things, you can feel, you can read situations, you read emotions, like. I see that your colleague here is interested, and Ian is sitting over there. Yeah, you know, and you're, you know, you, you, you know what I mean. You you look at things, and you know what. Yeah, you know, your. It's just being a songwriter or being a musician is just being. Uh, trying to be as perceptive, as you possibly can. You know what I mean? Yes, I know what you like, mean. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to see and feel all the things from outside to. Whereas in life, there's like a lot of order. There's a lot of order, and people survive through. They get. They go through the education system. They get a try to get a job, and there's all these things, and they try to maintain the order and stay within. Whereas when you become an artist, it's like you shift out of that order. And you follow your own path. You follow your own uh, artistic uh, inspiration. And as you go on that path, it's a path of uncertainty. You don't know what's yeah. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what's around the corner. But you just have faith in what you do, and just you just like you know wing it. You don't really wing it, but like. I, I, you know, you take you take risks, you take high risks, and um, you know, you have record labels who look at you as a risk. Management look at you as a risk. This place looks at you as a risk. Everywhere is constantly going: Is this going to happen, or is this not going to happen? Is this next record going to happen, or not going to happen? Is this thing? And you're constantly getting um, evaluated. But it keeps it interesting too, so that you never know what is going to happen. That's next. the beauty of it, you know. That's you put out a record and you go, "This is like gambling." <laughs> yeah, you know, a little bit. You know, I think like songwriting is like gambling with creativity, and I think the worst thing that can happen is you write a bad song. No one gets hurt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, know, you write a bad song, you just put it to one side, delete it. <laughs> but you write a good song, it could change your life. Yeah. You know, and the life of many people. So you you got to have a go. you got to be in it to win it. Not that there's anything, you know, to sounds like you're not going to win a football, you know. But, I know what you mean. <laughs> but you got to, like, participate. The worst thing you can do is not do anything. It's true. And if you think that, you know, that's the biggest uh, downfall for artists in this industry is, like, they go, people love me because, like, everyone's cheering me on the stage and I'm like a legend and then you go people just you know what I've just realized people just think I'm amazing and then they don't do anything because they think they're amazing and then nothing happens <laughs> they disappear they weren't that amazing yes. people people are very encouraging you know the fans like give you so much they make so many concessions for you. They encourage you so much. They put you up. And you just got to be careful that you don't let that turn you in, you know, 
into thinking that like the the you know well, yeah that you're like yeah you got to make somehow Something better, maybe? Ma- yeah maintain a bit of humility but what? still have that kind of confidence in yourself as well you know but sometimes you know very insecure people can latch on to that thing that gives them a sense of worth and that is very uh, um, hard to sustain. You know, if, if, if that adulation and that worship is your only means for self-worth and confidence, then you are a slave to that, to the people. <laughs> Which isn't going to make for great art or great music or great creativity because I think creativity needs to have a certain level of um, abandonment and selflessness. And I believe that what's important for success is kind of um, you got to love what you do, a lot of patience and believe in yourself as you said. What's important for you to be successful as a musician? Um, well, you just got to, I think, um, okay, what, you know, we were just saying before, you know, you got to know, like, what, what you're getting yourself into, you know, and, and, um, if you join a band and you're going to play drums or you play bass or you play, like, be cool with what your, you know, role is. You know what I mean? Like, if you're an air hostess and you want to be a pilot, you're always going to be pissed off. You know, you're going to be a fucking pilot. I'm putting chicken and beef. Say, well, you've got to go to pilot school for three years and do that. You might not work at this same airline. You might have to go work at a smaller one and work your way up and do regional stuff. But, you know, I think a lot of people, like, in music, it's like, you got to know what you get yourself into. If you start the band with your mates and you go up from the bottom, you got to know who you're working with, whether they're good people, whether they're drug addicts, alcoholics, gamblers, or whatever. You've got to know all this stuff. Then you got to know who you're working with, with management and all that. But you got to try to, like... You've got to, like, have an agreement, I think, between the people and sort of know, hey, some guy might be like, I just want to play on the weekends and stay at home with my family and get pissed on a Friday night. And then you go, well, that's cool. That's what we're going to do. Or if it's like, I want to tour the world and I want to do this and I want to write. And that, you go, okay, well, you've got to find the right people who are motivated to do what you want to do. And if you, you know, like... You get involved with people, you drag them up to heights that they never imagined yeah. what they were going to go to. They might not enjoy that. <laughs> They're over it. They don't want to do that. So you can be successful and, and sometimes not have people who actually want to be there. So if you can just have a kind of, you know, this industry is so bizarre because you're not qualified. There's no course. There's no apprenticeship there's no nothing you play with a couple of your mates get free beer get paid 35 bucks and then you can become the next big thing within six months and be playing 5,000 people a night have a lawyer have a business manager have a tax return have all these things and the have publishing deal and, and you would like you like You can go from $35 having a beer to all this stuff that you didn't even know existed <laughs> within six months, within a year. You know, when, when I started, like, we did a publishing deal. Someone's like, oh, someone wants to do a publishing deal. I'm like, What's a, what is publishing? And they're like, oh, that's like when you write it. And I was like, so, uh, what, is that like when you write down music on like a <laughs> score sheet or some shit? <laughs> like, what is that? And, you know, like, oh, mechanical royalties. What's a mechanical royalty? How do you, like, you, 
oh, do you want to do merch? Do you want to do, well, like, what, we're going to sell t-shirts? Who, what? Like, you can start off and it all happens and you will not know what's going on. You don't know what's going on. You've got you to gotta find out as you go. Because you can be proud of what you've made of somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you can survive all the, the challenges along the way, you know, you, yeah, you can, I don't know if, like, you can be, yeah, I think I'm proud. I don't know if I'm proud. I try. Should be. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I have two last questions, which I'd like to ask everyone to do an interview with, and I need an, uh, an answer of you both. My first question would be, if you had to convince a young person to listen to rock music, which song would you show him or her and why? Spanish Castle Magic is just so psychedelically awesome and <laughs> takes transporting and it'll make you want to pick up a guitar and make you want to hit those drums and yeah, it's a no-brainer for me. For you? I think it's like... For everyone, it's different, but before, if you want to start a band, it's like you got to hear something of yourself in someone else. You know what I mean? Like when I I heard Jimi Hendrix, and I was like, oh, I want to play like Jimi Hendrix, and then I tried it, and I was like, I can't play like Jimi <laughs> Hendrix. <laughs> but then when I and then I tried to do the Strokes, and I was like, I can't do the Strokes, and and then when I heard um, Black Sabbath. And it was just like bar chords and like, I was like, I think I can do this. <laughs> you know what I mean? So um, I think whoever you are, you, it's, a, it's, a, it's a path of self, uh, what do you call it? Self-discovery or find out who you are along the way. Try everything, you know, try metal, try folk, try R&B try blues try all your favorite bands and try singing it try playing along to it whatever it is and if you think that you're you almost like got it or whichever one's working the best then you just keep going with that you know so i i for me like um yeah song. one song that i heard was um paranoid okay black sabbath I was like, I was 18, and I was at this, uh, the Great Northern in Byron Bay, and I saw this band, big fat singer, long hair, all these kooky <laughs> mates, all hang, all their songs were terrible, and then I heard this riff, and all of a sudden I couldn't tell that he was fat, and I couldn't tell <laughs> that his friends were all weirdos, and, I, and the whole crowd, and I was like, there's something about this song that is awesome. I have to find out who the who these people are and what it is. But it took me years to find, you know, I, di I didn't go out and find out. It was only like five years later. I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, it's just like Silent <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a great song, though. And my last question would be if you could have kind of a fantasy dinner with three persons of your choice it doesn't matter if from the past or the future or whatever who would you invite <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know Walt Disney uh, <laughs> I, was, I don't know big Disney fan growing up um was he? I don't know. I, I he was. Oh my god. I didn't know that. Well, jeez. Okay. There goes my childhood. <laughs> uh, I don't know who else. Who else? Um, uh, Tom Hardy, because he's a great actor and uh, I like to know what makes him tick. <laughs> um, and um, maybe, maybe Beethoven, okay. because I, 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 he was probably like one of the. One of the first people I 
when I grew up playing music, I was okay. on, the, on the classical piano and I played a lot of Beethoven. And I Should very be much liked his though. story. <laughs> yeah, I remember seeing like the first movie I ever saw was Immortal Beloved okay. in the cinema with my granddad. It was about Beethoven and his whole life and his whole struggle and yeah, cool. I really got into it. And who would you invite? John Lennon, without a doubt. John Lennon, Francis Bacon. <laughs> <laughs> and I was going to say Picasso, but that could be a bit of a conflict. <laughs> I don't know. And then someone else, John Lennon, Francis Bacon, who else? Um, Stanley Kubrick. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Why? <laughs> oh, he's a freaking genius. He's a genius. Like, just before... um. I started Wolf Mother, I read Stanley Kubrick's biography. Okay. That blew my mind. <laughs> and that just like, because it's just like, go for it. You know, the level of detail and that he put into, you know, finding locations and the right, and just, just watching someone just go for it was so inspiring. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. That was it, guys. Thank you very much for your time. Pleasure, yeah. And uh, the last words are yours. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk here. Love in Germany, love in Stuttgart. Um, feel free to send us a, a free Porsche, Mercedes Benz, or BMW, or Audi, or all these great things <laughs> that you guys make. Just send them to us. Cameras, Sennheiser microphones, Neumann microphones, uh, Leica cameras. We will accept all of these things. <laughs> Contact us on a Facebook and send them to us anytime. Check out Victorious, buy our record, come to our shows, and uh, check out Come Backstage. This is a kick ass uh, station, webcast, log, log blog. <laughs>